I found out I was colorblind at a very young age and it's something that affects me in my daily life from choosing clothes to wear in the morning to trying to find ripe bananas in the supermarket. Every single day has something in it that involves an aspect of being colorblind. So in this video series, I'm going to be looking at what color blindness is, how it affects me and how it affects my quilting and the things that I do to help me cope with this. I'm also going to have a video that's going to have some tips and strategies that are going to help you make a quilt for someone that is color blind. As part of this video series, I'm going to have a PDF that's going to be available for you to download. And in that PDF, there are going to be some tried and tested color blind safe quilt color schemes that you can use in your projects for color blind people. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified when that's available. Hi, I'm Tom and I am the Colorblind Quilter and I'm on a journey to become a better quilter and I'm sharing my experiences as I go. If you like what you're seeing, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when I release a new video. So I found out that I was colorblind at a very young age in primary school and it didn't really affect me until I was a little bit older and I started to understand what it was. I remember being in primary school in classes and it was painting and not being able to pick the right colors or getting colors confused and it didn't really bother me. I didn't really think very much of it and it wasn't until I got to high school when I was in physics class and I wasn't allowed to touch electrical wiring because I was colorblind and um, for fear of blowing the place up. So this kind of made me grow up feeling like I had some kind of limitation that stopped me from doing the things that other people could do and also at the time certain jobs were off limit like being a pilot or being in the police although thankfully that has changed these days. It wasn't really until I started quilting that I really started to experience a proper frustration with being colorblind. I would see all these amazing quilts that other designers had made and would struggle to try and replicate the beautiful color palettes that they were using in their projects and I guess I hadn't realized how much of a limitation that I had mentally placed on myself from this. Because now I've come to believe that color theory and color harmony is a skill, like any other skill that can be learned and it can be mastered. I just happen to have a slight disadvantage that makes it a little bit harder for me, but not impossible. And of course, with help from friends and family, I can be as successful as somebody that has normal color vision. But you may be wondering actually, what is color blindness that you're, you, you know, what is this thing that you're talking about? So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about what color blindness is, the different types of color blindness, and then I'm gonna show you examples of what it's like to see the world through somebody who has color blind eyes. So in our eyes, we have three types of cells known as cones, which are sensitive to color. And the combination of those three cone types working together results in trichromatic color vision, which is just normal color vision. The cones in the eyes have different sensitivities to different wavelengths of light and are named after the particular wavelengths that they're sensitive to, so short, medium, or long wave, light wave. When all three types of cones are working correctly, it's known as trichromancy vision, which is full color vision. as some people have come to, to call it color vision deficiency, it's when there's some type of anomaly in one of those cells in your eyes. Now, either those cells can be not as sensitive to the light or they can be completely missing depending on what type of color blindness you have. Now color blindness is a genetic fault that's passed on by your parents and you usually have it from birth, although it is possible later in life to develop it from certain medications or illnesses or just from aging, we become less sensitive to the color. It mainly affects males, but females can also be colorblind, although it's a little bit less common for females to be colorblind. Females are usually the carrier of the faulty gene, which means that they can pass it on to their children, but will not necessarily be colorblind themselves. It is passed from a mother to a son. A colorblind father will necessarily have children that are colorblind unless his partner has that genetic fault as well. Girls are usually only colorblind when their father is colorblind and their mother is a carrier of the faulty gene that causes color vision deficiency. It's thought that around one in 12 men and one in 200 women suffer from a color vision deficiency. It is very rare though that somebody is born completely colorblind as in they cannot see any colors at all. But many colorblind people do learn to adapt and they learn to live their lives with minimal disruption. In some countries though, there are certain jobs that you're not allowed to do like pilots, join the armed force, drive a train, just depends on the country and the laws that they have. 
So there are different types of color blindness and they're dictated by the type of cone in the eye that's either missing or is weakened. The most common by far form of color blindness is red green color blind. And this is where somebody has trouble differentiating between reds and green. And within the red green spectrum, there are four different types of color blindness. So the first type is protonomaly, where red looks more like green. And that's due to a problem with the long wave cones in the eyes. They're not seeing enough red light, they're detecting too much green light. It can also be known as a red weakness. Deuteronomaly is when green looks more like red, and that's affected by the M cone, so it's not able to see enough of the medium wavelength light, also known as a green weakness. And those two are more common than the next two. Protonopia is a complete absence of the long wavelength light cone, which means you're not able to see red light at all and is known as red blindness. And deuteronopia is where the M cone is completely missing and you're completely unable to see green light, and it's known as green blindness. And I hope that I've pronounced them properly. Another form of color blindness, which is fairly rare, is blue yellow color blindness. And in this type of color blindness, there's a difficulty differentiating between blue and yellow and also green and red. So tritonomaly is when blue and yellow look similar and green and red look similar. And then the final type is tritonopia, and that's where you have a difficulty telling the difference between colors that contain blue and yellow. There's a third very rare type of color blindness called achromatopsia. It's incredibly rare and results in monochromatic vision, i.e. you cannot see colors at all. It is the rarest and the most difficult type of color blindness to try and adjust to. I am a mild protan, so there are different levels of severity within each of the bands. So I'm fairly mild, although I can be fairly strong. It depends on the test that I'm using. So color blindness is usually diagnosed at a young age using a couple of different tests. There is the Ishihara color plate test, which you may have seen before, is the series of little colored dots in a circle. And hidden within the circle is a number. Now, if you have normal color vision, you will see all of the numbers without any problem. When it comes to being colorblind, sometimes the numbers don't appear, or they don't appear to form the shape of the number correctly. So you may see part of a four, you may see nothing at all or you may be completely confused. The Ishihara plate test is the most common test for red-green color blindness. For young children who might not understand or know numbers yet, there is a version of this test that use shapes, so circles, squares, and triangles, so the children can say whether they see a shape, and that can be used in very young children to determine if there is color blindness. Now, if you want to try a color blindness test, check out the description below, and I've linked to an online color blindness test you can take, and it will show you what it's like to go through it. And if you can't see the numbers on some of them, then it will tell you if you're colorblind or not. In the US, the military use something that's known as the Farnsworth Lantern Test, and that's used in the military to see if you are able to serve. And I do believe that you can serve with some form of mild colorblindness. Finally, another test that's used is the Farnsworth Munzo Hue Test. This is where you get 100 chips, and on each chip there is a different hue of colors, and you're asked to arrange the colors in order. And this is a hard test. There is an online version of this test, although it's not the full test, it's just a small sample, but it will show you what it's like to go through that test. And I can tell you from my experience of trying that test, it is extremely difficult for me, even just with mild colored blindness. For somebody that has a much more severe, or in fact, a complete color blindness from a cone missing, it can be almost impossible to complete. So it's interesting because we live in such a technologically advanced world that there are so many solutions out there to help people. And it's interesting to see how things are slowly progressing for people that are colorblind. So there are a couple of things that can help us to adapt. You now get special glasses that have special lenses in them that can be used to correct a red and green color blindness. And they're just like normal glasses that you would wear with a prescription in them. They have special filters in them that do something to how the light affects your eye and then it allows you to register the colors. I've never tried them because they are quite expensive, but I would like to try them to see how, if, how it works and if it makes a difference. There are apps out there that can take a live feed through the video camera on the phone and it can convert it using algorithms to show the colorblind person the world so they can see it through normal color vision eyes. I have used that one before and pretty amazing the first time that you look through it and see things and you're like, wow, that didn't realize that that looked that way. It was interesting to see how technology is evolving and helping. In fact, on the iPhone and the accessibility, there is a colorblind mode that allows you to switch on a special filter on the phone that will help change the settings on the display so that it can help somebody that is colorblind to view things easier.
So I thought it might be interesting to show a couple of different examples here of pictures to show you how somebody with colorblind vision sees the world. With each one I'll show you normal vision and then what it's like to have the different types of color blindness just so you can get a good comparison. And also in the description I'll put a link to a color blindness simulator that's going to show you what it's like to be colorblind. And you can try that out with your own pictures to see what it's like. So that's it for the first part of this video series about color blindness. I really hope it was helpful for you to understand what color blindness is, how the eyes are affected and then to see a few examples of what it's like to be color blind. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how colorblind affects me specifically and how it affects me as a quilter. But if you have a question about being colorblind or, or colorblind quilting, then go ahead and leave a comment and I'm going to do a Q&A video at the end of this series with all the questions that people ask. And don't forget, I'm going to have a free download with colorblind accessible quilt color patterns that you will be able to download. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and to hit that bell so you get notified when the next installment of this video comes out. You can also find me on Instagram, Pinterest and Facebook at The Colorblind Quilter or you can find me on my website, thecolorblindquilter.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.